let's take a look now at some basic terms and definitions. First of all, let's start with the concept of the population. The population is a collection of all objects of interest in a statistical study. Okay, what does that mean? Well, suppose that we're looking at um, student athletes, specifically um, freshman year in volleyball. I just defined my population. I am now interested in all freshman volleyball players. Uh, I should probably refine it a little bit more. Are we talking about it nationwide? Are we talking about amongst a particular state, in a particular county, within a particular school district, at a particular campus, college campus, or high school campus? See, it's really important to understand what your population is to begin with. If I simply left it as all freshman volleyball players, what would I actually be talking about? Am I talking about just this campus or talking about statewide or nationwide? It's extremely important to comprehend what population you really are talking about. Because the basic idea behind the data analysis is we're going to collect information from this population. We will analyze it, and then ultimately, nine times out of ten, we're going to take the results of that analysis and infer back and talk about the population. Well, first of all, if you don't know what the population is, how can you talk about it? Second thing, if you don't know what the population is, how do you know that that group, that sample, which we're going to talk about in a second, that sample that you took even represents or even looks like that population. So it's extremely important whenever you're doing any type of data analysis to be able to first identify, clearly state what your population is. A census is a complete enumeration of the entire population. That would be going out to the entire population and getting data from every single element there. Now, just as a graphical representation, just for a moment, Let's suppose this box here represents my population. Think of the population as your entire universe. It's everything in it that pertains to this particular study. Each little dot I'm putting in here, let's just pretend like that represents one element. Each dot could be a person. It could be a bag of potato chips, if I'm talking about potato chips coming off an assembly line, cans of soda. Uh, it, it could, whatever it is you're talking about, that's what these dots represent. Now, I may have just put in, you know, 50, 60 dots, whatever, I didn't actually count them. But this population could be huge. It could be millions of elements. So, if we were to actually do a census, that would mean that we'd actually go out to each and every one of these. Contact every one of them and collect the information that we're, that we're interested in. Hopefully, you can quickly see how impossible that typically is. If you wanted to contact every single person in a county and ask them who they plan to vote for in an upcoming presidential election, that task is absolutely daunting. It, it, it just, it's kind of mind-boggling when you think about it. There may only be a couple hundred thousand people in that um, entire county that registered to vote. Contacting these people, it's, it's just crazy to think you can actually do that. If you were talking about um, perhaps you're, you're manufacturing metal cable and you want to see how strong the cable is, can you actually con or go out to every piece of cable that's manufactured and test it? Well, if you could physically do it, you wouldn't have any cable left. Because if you test it until it breaks to find out what the breaking strength is, you just broke that cable. It's destructive. So you see, it's impossible nine times out of ten. No, 99.999% of the time, or even more, it's, it's virtually impossible to actually go out to an entire population and conduct a census. So because we can't do that, we take what's known as a sample. Now, a sample is a subset of the population. And when we say subset, we're thinking about a smaller group. It's true that a subset is a complete set, but, or one subset is a complete set, but we're not going to get into that definition. When we talk about subsets of the population, what we're talking about is a smaller group. Now, the idea behind taking that smaller group is, number one, we believe that subset, that sample, is representative of the population. It looks like the population. And number two, it's much more manageable. You know, there may be millions of objects in the population, but we go out and take a sample of a hundred or a couple hundred, and if that sample is taken correctly, if it is representative of the population, then we can analyze that sample and come to some reasonable conclusions about the population. So what I'm talking about here is 
if I were to take a sample that looked like this, if you can think of this as some type of graphical representation, would all of these objects here be representative of everything else? Probably not. What we really want is a sample that kind of looks like is scattered about the population so that it well represents, it reasonably looks like the population. If this is what my sample looks like relative to the population, then I look and say, well, yeah, you know, um, that's pretty good. If I analyze this data, it should lead me to reasonable conclusions about the entire population, which is basically the name of the game here. A variable. A variable is a characteristic of interest about each individual element of the population or sample. If I'm taking a survey, one of the first things on my survey, if I'm contacting people, would probably be gender. That, that's a variable. When I see the person that I, I go up and ask some questions of, I, I'm going to check male or female. Gender, that, that, that's one variable. Um, I may ask them how they're going to vote in the upcoming election. That's another vo variable, how they're going to vote. Um, it's, the variable is each item of interest that we're actually going after, uh, the information that we're collecting. The term data <coughs> is both singular and plural. When we make reference to data as being singular, it refers to the value of the variable associated with one element of the population or sample. Um, it can be a numerical value, a word, or a symbol. I, again, if I go up, I'm taking a survey and I go up to somebody, and the first thing I do is I check off male or female. Well, if I checked off male because that first person I contact was a male, that is a single data point, a single data value, that indication for male. I could write the word male. I could record a zero for female, one for male, which is a common way of coding, that sort of thing. Or I could just have a checkbox. Either way, that is one particular data point. <clears throat> data plural refers to the entire set of values collected from each of the elements. So when I'm done with um, all my data collection, I have all the information, all these surveys, the surveys combined would then be all of my data. And typically you refer to all the data as a data set. It's the set of all the information that you collected. <clears throat> parameter versus statistic. A parameter is a numerical value summarizing the entire population. So perhaps I'm interested in the um, or the, the percent of student athletes at the community college level that actually graduate with a degree. Okay, so out there somewhere, there's a true proportion, true percent of student athletes in community colleges that actually did graduate with a, with a degree. Now, that's extremely difficult to get at. It, a lot of campuses don't collect that data, or it could be collected in a way that's very difficult to retrieve. How many years ago are you talking about? Are you talking about since the inception of the community colleges? Or are you talking about the last 10 years? All kinds of problems start to come up with this idea in terms of being able to actually get at this true proportion. The sample statistic is a value that would represent the sample. So I go out and take my sample. It may encompass 20 or 30 community colleges. They may go back two or three years. Uh, whatever the parameters of this um, an experiment this particular um, data analysis project consists of. So now you collect this data from these 20 or 30 community colleges and then you calculate a proportion from the sample. That's a sample statistic. And the idea here is ultimately we probably use the result of that sample statistic, say it's 73%. I have no idea, I just made that number up for sake of conversation. So let's just say it's about 73%. Okay, that 73% would then be our best guess what really happens amongst all the community colleges if our sample was reasonably representative of that entire population, all of the community colleges. So see, now we're going back to the idea of our sample and how well it represents the, the population. Statistics, the study of statistics. Okay, that's different from a statistic. A statistic is a result of the, of the sample, something that you summarize as a sample. The study of statistics is a collection, analysis, summary, and presentation of data. It's actually from the Greek word stata, which I may be mispronouncing, I honestly don't know, um, which means the state of affairs. So really statistics is the study of the current state of affairs, what's going on with whatever it is that you're interested in. 
when I talk about doing data analysis, completing the statistics um, regarding the student athlete example I, I gave a few moments ago, that is actually studying the current state of affairs. And the word current can be defined however you need to for a particular study. Two or three years back may be considered current as compared to two or three decades back. It's studying what's happening now. It's reporting the current state of affairs of something that you're interested in. Now, the study of statistics is actually typically broken down into or thought of as two primary areas. The first area is that of descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics describes the result of the sample data. And by the way, I can see right now this is a typo. This should be the word sample, S-A-M-P-L-E. Okay, describes the results of the sample data. Inferential, on the other hand, takes the result of the sample data, the descriptive statistics, and makes an inference back to the population. That, I was talking about that earlier, trying to avoid these specific terms. I know I was coming to it, but that's exactly what I was making reference to earlier. Descriptive statistics is simply the result of your study. It's what you calculated based on the data you collected. Once you take those results and you make a generalization, that's, that's a common term that's used, a generalization back to the population, you're inferring back to the population, now you've jumped into the realm of inferential statistics because you're making an inference about this huge population, or this population at least is bigger or, or unmanageable in some way. It may not truly be huge. But you're making an inference about this population based on what you saw in, in this sample. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for this particular section. Now, the next video in this particular series, we will be discussing um, measurement scales.